chronic total occlusion represent 100% blockages of the coronary arteries. Oftentimes, a compensatory mechanism occurs with collateral flow to these blockages, which is sufficient to maintain muscle viability, but is not sufficient to provide enough oxygen and nutrients during exercise with the onset of symptoms, such as chest pain and shortness of breath. We encounter this problem in about 15% of the patients that come to the cath lab. Patients with coronary artery disease who have significant stenosis are often treated with angioplasty and stenting with near 100% success rates. With CTOs, the success rate is significantly less, traditionally in the 65% range in selected cases because of the complexity of the disease. Oftentimes, physicians avoid treating these patients and they are referred to either surgery or they are left to be treated with medications or they are often told that there's nothing else that can be done. The current body of clinical data suggests that opening up these chronic total occlusions and performing angioplasty and stenting is beneficial for the patient in terms of improvement of symptoms, improvement in left ventricular function, and possibly even a survival advantage. In the past five years, there have been significant advancements in the field of coronary total occlusion percutaneous interventions. The main advance has been the development of this hybrid algorithm that encompasses three different approaches, an anti-grade wire approach, an anti-grade dissection re-entry approach, and a retrograde approach. The algorithm is telling us how to tackle these lesions based on the lesion characteristics and which approach to go to first and how to cycle between these different approaches. In experienced hands, the success rates are in the 85 to 90 percent range. I think CTO is undertreated. I think a lot of these patients are told by the physicians that there is nothing else that can be done. This is partially due to the fact that physicians are not aware about the interventional possibilities and the fact that the therapy is done locally. I think physicians need to be aware that we are now successful at tackling these complex lesions, often termed the final frontier in interventional cardiology, with good success rates and low complication rates.